Well, Peter, a very good morning to you. Uh, nice to see you again. It's been a couple of weeks. And uh, how's things going livestock-wise around the nation? I suppose this time of the year, Mark, we'd normally um, a bit quieter than normal. Um, certainly, uh, you know, in the middle of winter, uh, less stock coming out, less stock being traded. Although I think we're still seeing um, some overflow out of uh, the uh, close down or lockdown through uh, COVID-19, but also with the freezing works uh, having limited space through that um, March, April, May period. So, yeah, still seeing some some uh, a little bit of overflow from that so sort of you know doing some quite good numbers but certainly this time of the year is quite slow which mm -hmm. you know you expect you've got a you've got a feel for those farmers in the north um you know i, I saw one guy who uh, incredibly now he had a, a lake virtually on his farm so you know he's gone through a drought now he's got the absolute opposite i mean how do you how do you work that through yeah it's pretty tough isn't it i mean a guy from being probably one of the worst droughts that northland's had for a long time to you know, some of the wettest um, and heaviest rain they've had. I thought one one region got nine months rain in six hours, I think I saw on one of the weather reports, which, mm. you know, is really pretty phenomenal. Um, but, yeah, talking to my livestock manager up there uh, earlier in the week, you know, he said there's lots of low-lying areas underwater and they'll be underwater for some time. So mm. clearly that's, you know, going to affect feed as well. So they've gone from having no feed because it's too dry to now having parts of their farms underwater and it's too wet. So that's can be quite disheartening. Um, mm, yeah. And, you know, it's only a few weeks ago, I think, when I was talking to you that I said, well, you know, it's good to see rain in Northland, the grass is growing, the sun's shining, and there's quite a bit of positivity. So, mm. yeah, pretty tough. But also, similar issues in Gisborne as well, Mark, with very heavy rain through there, with roads closed and, and um, some of those areas, um, you know, sort of cut off in the short mm. term until the roads mm. are opened again. Now calves, they're of note, especially the four day old ones. Uh, what's happening there? Yeah, we've certainly seen some big numbers coming out um, and good calves are making pretty good money. You know, we had average sale last week at, uh, at our Frankton four day old calf sale. The average price I think was around $120, $130, which is pretty good money for a four day old calf uh, in the current environment. Uh, it's great to see that people are prepared to rear them though, because you know, that's the future of the beef industry. And I think I've said on this program before, you know, one of the challenges is how can we get more beef from the dairy industry? So that's, mm. that's good to see. We were a little concerned that maybe a lot of those calves may not get reared this year, but so far, so good. We've seen good numbers come out and also good demand for those calves as well. So I suppose an issue, again, is feeding and, and uh, would that have been part of the decision process for, for selling them or, you know, or buying them for that matter? I mean, the farmers who buy them obviously have got the feed. I, th I think, you know, obviously, um, you know, Calf rearers, you know, using um, calf milk replacer, which is you know still reasonably pricey at the moment, with um, with the global, you know, driven by the global dairy product pricing. Mm. But you know, the beef industry, um, you know, there's some good forward contracts there for guys rearing those calves. You know, at 100 kilos, probably you know, and well north of 400 dollars for some of those early calves at 100 kilos. So, I think people have gone away and done the sums and said, you know, I can buy a calf, I can rear it. Um, and uh, can still make a, you know quite a good margin on it. So mm. I'd also encourage calf rearers that are thinking of rearing calves to talk to their PGW agent and see if they can't get a forward contract on them because that gives everyone some certainty. What about the sheep pens? How, is, how are things working out there? Yeah, they're going pretty well. Lambs continue to sell fairly well. Um, you know, there's not a great deal of demand, demand for uh, in lamb use. That seems to be one of the soft spots at the moment. I think maybe that's largely feed related. Mm. But I think um, you know, there's a little bit of um, I suppose, uh, concern with the longer term sheep meat pricing. I mean, it's been very, very good for the last at least two years, but I think we're just seeing a little bit of market resistance to um, not so much more of your commodity cuts, but your primal cuts mm -hmm. like your, your racks of lamb and your primal cuts. I think there's a bit of resistance to that. And that's mm -hmm. largely because many of the restaurants in a lot of parts of the world, you know, with, with the massive COVID outbreaks in certain countries, has meant that the demand is less. So, um, I've said the outlook for sheep has been very strong. I still think it's very good, but I just think that very high end of it just may come off a little bit. And I heard also that the Wiltshires are selling well at the moment. The, the fact that they shed their wool is a, a pretty positive thing at the moment. Sure is. I mean, uh, you know, the wool industry's you know, um, having some, you know, some really is in trouble times. Um, there is not a great deal of demand for, you know, what is traditionally some of the best wool in the world that we grow in New Zealand, but, you know, there's not great demand for it. Part of that's driven obviously by um, you know the, the further processing and parts like China and even Europe where 
um, two parts to that. One is getting wool to that part of the world has been quite slow with the supply chain slowed down. And secondly, the demand for wool products is, um, you know, is pretty flat. And I think part of that is, you know, wool is a great product, but obviously, you know, the synthetics are quite a bit um, cheaper than wool. And what we're seeing is the demand for wool products um, probably hasn't diminished a lot, Mark, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough market and it's a mm. tough place to be in at the moment in the wool mm. industry.